In this live stream, I'm gonna walk you through 20 things you should never say to a graphic designer, but probably do. Let's get started. If you're new, to this channel, I'm Bradley, the CEO, owner, and head designer of the graphic design and marketing firm, B Design. And our mission is to help you master the tools to building your influence and impact in the graphic design world faster. Design in the workplace can be hard. We know because we asked members of our team and recently, We've been speaking to, to a number of different businesses about the challenges they face in, the, in their workplace. We're going to be sharing these with you in this live stream. But we want to start with one of the most colorful topics we've covered, communication between designers and departments uh, or clients. Believe me, we get it. Graphic designers can be hard to com communicate with. They have their design jargon and special softwares. And you might have no idea what it all means or how it all works. So if you, so if you work with designers, it helps to ask the right kind of questions that will move the pro their, move your project along and create a final pro product that everyone will be happy with, rather than questions that bring the project to a crushing halt with incorrect assumptions about the design process. What might the, those be? I'm going to show you 20 examples of questions that, you're, that designers wish they didn't hear. Let's get started. Number one. Don't say, we haven't finished the write-up, but can you design a draft anyways? Why shouldn't you ask this? You'll often hear marketing experts that say that content is king. A design should be built around the content, not vice versa. Presenting content to its best advantage, will always look better and get better results than trying to squeeze all the content into an existing design. Plus going back and trying to rearrange the design to fit the copy can be time consuming for a designer and increase the turnaround time for you or your company. Next time, get the copy as close to the final version as you can before asking your designer to get started. It's better for everyone. Number two, don't say, can I get you to do something really quick? And why shouldn't you ask this? Are you sure it will be quick? Do you want? Do you know what's involved? Your designer is more than likely to help, more than happy to accommodate an extra task or adjustment here and there, but will definitely appreciate your consideration in asking how much time it will take 
rather than if you just assume it's a quick fix. Designers are good at giving estimates and will let you know how much time they need if you ask them. And remember, quality is time. If you want a good design, you have to give the time to get it done. Number three, don't say, can you put it in a format that we can edit? And why you shouldn't ask this is if you request an editable source file, you'll likely need specialized design software and risk changing your carefully crafted project for the worse. If you don't know, if you don't have any design knowledge yourself, if you want a professionally quality design but will need to make edits regularly, you might consider a DIY option like Canva, which B Designs done a video on and I'll B Designs done a video on Canva. And I'll link that down in the description after the live stream. Canva is where you can have access to templates created by designers that you can customize or tweak at any time without compromising design quality. Question number four you should never ask. Can you do a lot of different versions? I think I'll know what I want when I see it. Let's say you're buying an expensive tailor-made um, suit or a fancy custom dress. Would you say to the seamstress, can you make me six versions of the outfit? When I see them, I'll choose the one that I like and pay for that one. Of course, you would never see that. Just because graphic design is often a digital rather than physical, tangible product doesn't mean that the designer puts any less time and care into the work. The design process will go more smoothly for both you and the designer if you first spend some time developing a detailed creative brief that helps the designer understand exactly what you're looking for or and are trying to achieve with the design including information like your in, your intended audience preferred tone or aesthetic budget or etc. We design has a video that's going out on Friday on how to create a client brief in Google Forms and the best questions to ask in a client brief. So if you're not sure what questions to ask in a client brief or don't know how to create one, be sure to check that out this Friday. Number five, don't say, can you Photoshop it? And why you shouldn't say this is yes, Photoshop and other advanced design software can do some amazing things, but it can't do everything. Sometimes designers receive requests that really are typically impossible. And just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should. Some of the more extreme or outlandish effects and treatments that are possible are not necessarily the best choice from a design perspective. 
Plus, we've all seen Photoshop choices backfire, such as model with models with a uh, an oddly arranged arm or leg, or impossibly thin proportions. So ask your designer to give you some feedback and construct constructive criticism. They'll usually have a pretty good idea and what good idea of what will or won't work for your design. Number six, can I make just one more change? I promise it will be the last. You, you'd be surprised at how many times I've heard clients ask this. And why clients shouldn't ask this is, you, is because you and your designer know that there will possibly be other changes after that one. After all, you've asked for multiple tweaks already. So let's just be upfront about it and nicely. Apologetically say something like, I'm so sorry to keep taking up your time like this, but I found another change I'd like to make. Can you change this word, font, graphic, or color? Feel free to add the extra time for these edits to your invoice. Graphic designers are short on time, just like you are. And although they do want to help you make sure you, the design fits your needs, they also appreciate the acknowledgement that their time is valuable. So next time, try to try to create a complete list of all the changes you like and hand them over the design, hand it over to the designer to do all at one time which is more efficient for everyone. For B, Desi for B Design, we have it stated in our contracts that we only allow five revisions for every project. If there's more needed, then that'll cost extra. Number seven of things you should never ask a designer. Can you do something that looks exactly like this other designer's work? And why you should never ask this for a designer to do? Aside from copyright issues and possible legal consequences, this should be a matter of ethics. No designer should be okay with copying another artist's work outright. And you shouldn't expect them to. Instead, try pointing out what you like about a design specifically and ask your designer to do their own take on the style or try certain elements inspired by the work, like a like a color scheme, basic layout, or general aesthetic, clean, vintage, bold, etc. Number eight, can you use this image I found online? This is like the worst thing you can ask a designer to do. Because turning to Google or other search engines for images can backfire in a number of ways. For one, like the previous point, you could run into legal trouble for using a copyrighted image. One that's not licensed for, 
for personal or commercial use. Additionally, it's likely that the image won't even look good in the in your design because the resolution is way too low. So typically, a a good res resolution is 72 and up. And for print, it needs to be at least 300 and up. If you're looking for an alternative to paying for stock photos, there is an increasing number of resources where you can find quality free stock photos. For be design for an instance, we use a resource called freepick.com where most of the images and graphics are free. Question number nine you should never ask a designer. Can you have this done by tomorrow? I hate getting this question. Graphic design isn't an instant process that is done with a few clicks of a mouse. Every project will have its own process and time requirements. Realistically, some designs can be whipped up in a day, while others will take much, much longer. It completely depends on the project and the designer's creative process. If you found a designer you'd like to hire, let him or her know about your time constraints and ask for realistic estimates and how long the design will take. Number 10. I, I know someone who works for half that. Would you? Be willing to lower your rates to match. And I just hate questions from clients that ask to lower your rates and the work for free or stuff like that. They just, they need to understand that it takes a lot of time to do what we do. Because designers set their prices based on multiple components. Like, Geography, where they live, the cost of living, style, skill, experience, and many more factors. Because we all have bills to pay, and we can't pay our electric or water or even rent for $5. Every designer will have a different combination of strengths and abilities to offer. And there's no special formula for determining if a designer's rate is competitive or fair. Generally, though you get what you pay for, so you need to decide what characteristics are most valuable to you and a designer. Speed, quality, originality, repetition, personality. That's not that's not to say price isn't negotiable. But if your first encounter with a designer is an effort to lowball his rates, 
su suggesting a rate much, much lower than normal while expecting the same quality of work that will be an immediate turnoff and feel disrespectful to the designer. Redesign always says, if you want quality design, you have to be willing to pay for it. If you want a thousand dollar logo and you can't, and you'll, you'll say you can only pay five dollars for it, well then that's not really fair to the designer. Number 11. Don't say in the middle of a project, by the way, I'll need this other related items in addition to the initial design. Can you do that? Why you should never do this to a designer? Expanding the scope of your design project in the middle of the project after agreeing upon a certain arrangement or if you've agreed on a logo package and now you're asking for business cards and a letterhead design in addition is one of the worst things you can do from a designer's perspective. Especially if you expect those additions to be included in the original price. This is where a creative brief comes in handy. Including the full scope of the project within the brief ensures that you and your designer <clears throat> are on the same page and can play and can plan, plan your budget and timeline accordingly preventing unnecessary frustration. If you do run into extra unexpected needs during the course of the project, you'll need to work out a new budget and timeline for those additions. Number 12, can you make it pop? Designers, unfortunately, can't read your mind. Although we wish we could, we can't. So when you're giving guidance or feedback on design, try to be as specific as possible. Your designer won't know what vague descriptors like make it pop, edgy, modern, or fancy means unless you make it clear what they mean to you by being more detailed or showing examples that are similar to what you're looking for. Number 13, can you just let the logo off our, can you just get the logo off our website? Saving or taking a screenshot of a logo from your company's website, Facebook page, or any other online source just won't cut the quality wise, especially for print projects. Logos need to have a certain resolution to look sharp and clear in your design. There are different requirements for print and web. The fail-safe format to hand over your logo is a vector file, which means that it can be resized larger or smaller to suit 
any design without loss of quality. Common vector files types are AI, and Adobe Illustrator source file, and EPS. The original designer of the logo should be able to provide you with an appropriate file if you don't have one. Number 14 of things you should never say to a designer. How about we just go back to your original concept? <clears throat> designers are designers because they have the artistic and technical ability to do their job well. <clears throat> Sometimes instead of asking for multiple iterations, iterations of a design, concept, it's best to trust your designer. After you explain what you need, let the designer come up with the de best design they can. Then take a good hard look at the design. Maybe take a couple days to mull it over or run it by a trusted third party who has some knowledge of design or your industry. And make sure any changes you request are necessary and explainable. Don't waste your designer's time with endless experimentation when the initial design is exactly what you asked for. <clears throat> Number 15, I started the design for you in a, a Microsoft Word, Paint, or Publisher. Can you finish it for me? While programs that come loaded on your PC or Mac are perfectly suitable for everyday casual use. They're not intended for professional pro design projects. Neither you nor an experienced designer will be able to get the kind of quality you're looking for from a home office program. That's why designers Use specialized software. It's best to let them use the tools from start to finish. You'll be much happier with the final product. For instance, Redesign uses only Adobe software for our projects, so our clients get only the best design quality. Number 16 of things you should never say to a graphic designer. I can't pay you, but you'll get a lot of exposure. Is that okay? Designers like a little publicity as much as the next guy, but it won't pay the bills. Freelance designers in particular have none of the benefits of traditional employment. They pay their own taxes and insurance, buy their own equipment and supplies, often maintain a home office, etc. All of those costs, not to mention regular living expenses, have to be taken into consideration when designers set their rates. 
So doing a job for free or for non-monetary composition usually just isn't a viable option. That's why when I can't that's why I can't stand designers that do free work or work for $5. Because that makes clients expect every designer to charge that, charge that, no matter what the design is or how much time it takes or the fact we have bills to pay and mouths to feed. Number 17, once you're done with the design, I can have unlimited revisions, right? Many designers put a limit or a fee structure on revisions because a project can theoretically never end. There's always something new to try or Another small adjustment to make. You can expect to go through a few rounds of revisions with new, with your design. That's a that's normal, and most designers are happy to work with you to get your project as close to perfect as possible within reason. Remember. Even small changes take time to make, and the more changes you request, the longer the project's turnaround time is. That's why, as I mentioned, redesign only allows five revisions per design. Any more than that costs extra. Number 18, how much would my special complicated project cost? The answer isn't as simple as you might think and will, and will be different for every project and for every designer. To borrow an analog, analogy, whoops, to borrow an analogy from a designer, David Erie, asking how much for take your pick of a design project is aching to asking a realtor how much for a house. The answer is that it depends on a lot of, di lot of things. That's because pricing a project is not a black and white process. Most designers will want to have a detailed discussion about your project before giving you a quote. Factors like how complex it is, how fast you'll need it, what types of formats or deliverables you'll want, where and how it will be printed or published and many other others all play a part in determining pricing when you first approach designers offer your project details before asking about costs and you'll get a more thoughtful accurate estimate Number 19 of things you should never say to a graphic designer is, can I call you or email you at any time? Nobody, even freelancers or night owls, monitor, monitors their, own, their work email or phone 24-7. Designers have schedules, too. 
even if they work from home in their pajamas and often collaborate with multiple clients simultaneously. You may not be able to get a hold of your designer at a moment's notice, but you should hear back from them during his or her work hours. <clears throat> if you're concerned about how easy it will be to keep in touch, make sure you ask them the, when their work hours are and limit your mo most important messages to that time. As well, what his preferred method of communication is. With eDesign, our preferred method is email, which if you ever need any flyers, posters, branding, or design work done, eDesign 680 has a link to our email on our YouTube homepage. So just get a hold of us anytime. Number 20, you're the expert here. Can't you just do your creative magic? I hate when clients ask me this. Well, yes and no. Designers are or should be experts at creating beautiful functional designs from the guidance and parameter you provide, but as we've mentioned <clears throat> in previous points, having something to go in the first place makes the process much smoother. A detailed creative brief is ideal, but even sometimes as simple as providing some examples of designs and do and don'ts like can be very helpful. Jeff Scholl at ProPoint Graphics puts it this way. You're the expert here. Basically says we, the clients, defer to your judgment to read our minds and give us something we didn't even know we wanted. That is a lot of pressure to lay on a graphic designer. The bigger issue is the amount of freedom it amount of freedom it gives the designer. This phrase gives us unlimited freedom to try to tell the story that you know best. We can deliver Picasso, but you were looking for Rembrandt. There's gonna be an issue. Designers can put all their creative energies <clears throat> in the creating an interesting, effective design, but only you know what you want. So it's ultimately up to you to communicate that. To sum things up, clients that are easy to work with who communicate clearly and politely establish expectations up front and are willing to collaborate, get the best work from their designers. And designers that have those same qualities have some has have more satisfied clients. Most designers 
are more than happy to guide you through the often foreign design process and answer any questions you might have and they like nothing better than being asked for recommendations as with a collaborative environment a little mutual respect and giving give and take go a long way in creative in creating a productive partnership well, that was the 20 things you should never say to a graphic designer. If you got value from this live stream, then consider subscribing and smashing that like button. And while you're at it, hit the notification bell so you can get notified about our next live stream next Wednesday. And don't forget, if you dream it, we at B-Design can help you design it. Bye.